Thank you, Pastor Gadesha. Buona sifiwe. How are you doing? Did you have a good week? Amen. Good to see you in the house of the Lord this Sunday afternoon. It's already afternoon. Amen. We had a great time um, over the weekend. The pastors and the spouses from all Sitam assemblies, we went down coast and we had a wonderful time. Amen. We are renewed. We had a great speaker speaking to us about the pastor and his finances. We were challenged, I'm telling you. We were really challenged. I know that we are better people as a result of that retreat. Men, can I give you a tip? Once in a while, take your wife out. Treat her. When you come back home, test Ugali to have a different anointing. <laughs> Amen. We have had a great series during the family month. We looked at intimacy, communication, parenting, and friendship. And then, of course, a week ago, we had the great convention, the family fest. As for me and my house, a great time we had in the presence of the Lord. As a pastoral team, last week we are going through uh, uh, the whole series and wondering what direction should we take in the next one or two Sundays before we begin Safari Embrace on the 18th of June. And by the way, buy books. I think they should be here. Buy books for Embrace. We are preparing for Sitam Safari from 18th of June. We have two Sundays and we thought perhaps there is an aspect to do with family we haven't quite highlighted. And so the pastors clearly concurred that we need to bring a spiritual angle to the aspect of the family. There are spiritual challenges and perhaps bondages that affect families. Some of these realities cannot be resolved by good communication and parenting styles alone. Those ones are good and we thank God for that. They make for a good foundation for the family. But there are certain realities that confront especially African families. Our cultures are for, for, fallen, not foreign, I was going to say foreign. They are fallen cultures, and maybe foreign as well. <laughs> there are certain practices that are conducted or done in families and in communities that predispose families and communities into satanic influence. And so that's an aspect I want to address today, contending for your family. The title of my message is Contending for Your Family. Next Sunday, I will speak on the subject Transgenerational Blessings. You didn't hear me. I said next Sunday, we will consider transgenerational blessings. People talk about generational curses, but they're also generational blessings. That's what we will consider next Sunday, and I'm looking forward to it. Amen? For now, let's confront some of the realities that our cultures and our families are faced with. There's an amazing story captured in the book of 1 Chronicles, chapter 4, verse 9 to 10. A story that is well told, a story that many others have written books about. 1 Chronicles, or Mambo Yanyakati. See what Corinto. Chronicles um, is just a chronology of families and communities from Adam to Abraham and so forth. Chronicles. The Bible says Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. His mother named him Jabez. Sounds a great name like a warrior. Hold on. He named, she named him Jabez saying, I gave birth to him in pain. Jabez cried out to God of Israel, Oh, that you will bless me indeed and enlarge my territory. 
Let your hand be with me and keep me from harm so that I will be free from pain. And God granted his request. As I said, the story of Jabez is a well-told story from the Old Testament. The details about Jabez, his background is very scanty. The Bible doesn't give us many details. The name of the mother, the name of the father, the grandfather, what kind of community and what kind of environment he grew up in. It goes straight into the issue. Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. In what regard was Jabez honorable? The Bible tells us his mother, some translations say, but. Sometimes but negates what he said before. Honorable man, but. Actually, in this context, we are given the end and then the story unfolds. We will see shortly how Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. But let's go back to his birth. The mother apparently had difficulties either at delivery or some calamity or disaster struck the family. In fact, we don't even know the name of the dad. They may have gone through a very difficult season of his life. Maybe the father passed on. We can only speculate. But whatever it was, it was a difficult time. And the mother, to remember that sad time of her life, that difficult moment of her life, she named her son Jabez, saying, I bore him in pain. Now, Jabez means grief or sorrow. Sounds a good name, but it's actually a terrible name to call a child. In our time, if you... He was born in Mombasa. He would be called Tabu. Shida. It's true. If we go back to the Hebrew culture, a name was not just a sign of identity. Like James, John, Joshua, Joseph. No. The name carried the character of an individual. The personality, the character of the person. Secondly, the name carried the mission of the person. The mission of the person was tied to the name of that person. And in some cases, the name carried the destiny of the person. The character, mission, and the destiny of an individual was wrapped up in the name of the person. So the name of the person was beyond the identity of the person. It carried the character, the, the mission, and the destiny of the person. Where is this leading to? Now, if you are called sorrow, what's your mission? Cause sh uh, cause. Sorrow, not sorrow. <laughs> Pastor Grace, did you? <laughs> Your mission is to cause sorrow or to experience sorrow. Jabez knew this. Listen to his prayer. It reveals a few things I want to share with us. Jabez cried out to God. He knew the burden before him. There are times nice written prayers have to turn into a cry. Spontaneous petition and agonizing before the Lord, wrestling with the Lord. Jabez here is wrestling with the Lord. He cried out to the Lord. God answers those prayers that are said from the book, if they are said from the bottom of someone's heart. So don't discard that tradition. But if your prayers have no heart in it, they can't get to the heart of God. Jabez cries out to, you can sense the weight. You can sense the challenge. You can sense the burden. He cried out to God of Israel, oh, that you will bless me indeed. Oh, that you will bless me indeed. Not just bless me. 
Every last one of you is blessed by the Lord. God has blessed you with the gift of life. You didn't come here on a stretcher. You are not buying oxygen. You are not feeding through a tube. We thank God for the gift of life that you are able to move around and do stuff. When God sends the rain, it doesn't rain on the fields of the righteous only. It also rains on the fields of uh, the wicked. Those are common masses to everybody. God's common masses or graces or blessings or favor. In that way, God favors creation. He doesn't discriminate. But wait a minute. While we thank God for his common masses, his graces and his blessings, that is not what Jabez is looking for. He may have been grateful for the fact that in spite of the difficult circumstances under which he was born, God had kept him through infancy. He didn't die. He survived that season. But Jabez is asking for something far more beyond, Lord, bless me for me. Bless me. Give me daily bread. The prayers of survival. That is not what Jabez is praying for. Get me right. Don't despise the masses of God. The Bible says they are new every morning. Whether you are born again or not in this service, you are experiencing God's masses. There are people who never woke up, who slept last night but never woke up. You are a recipient of God's mercy and grace. But Jabez is praying, is asking for something far bigger than general masses and, uh, and the grace of God. And he says that you will bless me indeed. What is he meaning by being blessed indeed? And he says, enlarge my territory. You didn't get it. What Jabez is saying, bless me indeed. How? Enlarge my territory. Make me to be a man of influence. It's not just survival. It's not just to get by. It's not just for daily bread. I want to be a man of legacy, a man of impact. I want to, to change me and make me to be a blessing. Don't bless me for me only. Make me to be a blessing. Some translation says, enlarge my coast. Broaden my borders. He was a villager. And, and, and by the way, wait, hang on a bit. There are a few details that emerge from this story. He says, oh, that you will bless me and enlarge my territory. Let your hand be with me and keep me from harm so that I'll be free from pain. You don't pray for freedom unless you are bound. He's saying, don't. <laughs> He's already experiencing the repercussion and the effects of his background. He said that I may be free from pain. He's already experiencing pain, but he has known something glorious, a powerful truth here that he can turn to the God of Israel and God can change disaster into blessings. Enlarge my cost. And this resonates with our theme. Enlarge your Tent, strengthen your. This theme is not the blessings for me and me. It's for influence. It's for impact. It's for legacy. Hallelujah. That is a prayer of Jabez. That you may extend my influence. Anyone praying, Lord, enlarge my coast. Extend my borders. That you may make me a man or a woman of influence. I don't just want to be a statistic. You know, Chronicles has many names. And in fact, the names of the brothers of Jabez, we don't even know them. There was nothing to write about them. When the Bible is quiet about names, basically, there's nothing to write home about no impact, just a statistic. And I pray that I'm speaking to people who just want to be more than a statistic. You want to have a legacy. You want to have an impact. Hang on. He cried out to the Lord that you will bless me and enlarge my territory. Let your hand be with me and keep me from harm so that I'll be free from pain. God answered that prayer. Again, we do not know a lot of details about how God answered that prayer. But stay with me from the Bible. It's amazing. 1 Chronicles 
52, 55 gives us a window of how God blessed Jabez. Now, there's a village or a town named after him. The town or the village of Jabez. Now, this village of Jabez raised many powerful scribes of Israel. Some of the most gifted writers and scribes of Israel came from Jabez. In fact, Jeremiah talks about the same. The men, the Rechabites. The Rechabites came from Jabez. Now, these were amazing people who walked and followed the way of the Lord. The book of Jeremiah. I'll give you as a reference so that you can read it on your own. Jeremiah 35 and 16. Because they followed the Lord wholeheartedly. Tried to restrain other people from going to idolatry in vain. God spoke a blessing to the Rechabites who were descendants from Jabez. He spoke the blessings of God upon them. Can you see the impact and the influence of Jabez? One who was meant to cause pain turned a village or a town was named after him and the people of the village were blessed and it produced some of the best writers or scribes in Israel. Men for many generations who followed the Lord. In fact, in Jeremiah 35, uh, 16 and 17, uh, uh, it says that they followed their forefathers, the Rechabites. They followed the commands of their forefathers. And God spoke a blessing upon them and said, You shall never lack a man who will be in authority. The Rechabites were blessed. And this can be traced back to the prayer of Jabez. This is influence at best. A village is named after you. The community turns to the Lord. And for generations to come, there is a legacy left. Oh, that you bless me indeed and enlarge my territory. Enlarge my borders. Keep my hand or keep me from evil. And as I wondered as we were thinking about the family, how best do we conclude this great series we've had, we felt we need to address some of the things in our cultures and even in our families that seem to be a hindrance, limitations and barriers, things that stop us from enlarging our tents and our territories and being men and women of impact. Jabez, had he not turned to the Lord, he would have been a statistic like his brother's Mentioned in passing because there's nothing to tell people about this person who were born this time, they died this time, or they were gathered to their forefathers. But because he prayed, the family changed. A legacy was left. A lasting legacy was left. I have counseled with many Christians, born again, both Couples born again, but somehow there seemed to be a stronghold in their lives. The man is unfaithful and he doesn't understand why. As we pray, it emerges that the father was unfaithful or involved in polygamy or other issues that seem to have opened the family into some strongholds. It's a reality. We are confronted with challenges and issues that seem to hold people into captivity. I know this is a theological question that has been asked over and over. What happens when you get born again? Can a Christian be demon possessed? My short and quick answer would be, you cannot be demon possessed, but you can be oppressed by the devil. And those are two different things. Possession means the devil owns you. And the devil cannot own you if you are born again. But he can oppress you. He can attack you. That's why the Bible tells us, submit therefore to God. These are believers, okay? Resist the devil and he will flee from you. He will run as though in terror. He will be terrified. He will run away from you. The devil has always wanted to control God's creation. You know how he did that? He struck the first family, Adam and Eve. That tragic great fall affected the family in profound ways. 
Soon after they were chased from the garden, what happened? Murder in the family. A brother rising against a brother and murder happens. And ever since, the family seemed to be confronted by many, many challenges. There are ills that plague the family today because the devil knows when he strikes at the heart of the family, God's creation suffers. I salute you all environmentalists. But when the devil wanted to mess God's creation, he didn't touch global warming. He hid that the family. Because God intended to reign over creation through the family. He even called Abraham that he may raise a godly offspring. That God rule will be experienced through the family. That's why the family is so critical. And the devil will do anything to try and scatter the family. Break the family and cause all sorts of limitations and bondages in the family. That hinder the family from moving forward and achieving God's desired purposes. As I look at the family today, I see certain patterns that run through the families. And this really amazed me. The spirit of unfaithfulness, the spirit of divorce, the spirit of polygamy, alcoholism, witchcraft, divin divination, which is passed on from generation to generation, murder, extreme poverty, certain diseases and misfortunes. Some of these things can be patterns in families. In the interest of time, I just want to mention a few things that will amaze you. Let me begin with alcoholism. Did you know alcoholism is a spirit? It's beyond an addiction. Let me show you something from research, not from the Bible. You'll be amazed. And this is taken from... The Journal of Operational Psychiatry. Oxford University Press, 1976. Basically, these researchers were trying to find out how come some family seems to have a pattern of alcoholism. How come that seems to be going from generation to generation. And let me just read to you the findings. Research conducted shows that some people tend to inherit a higher vulnerability to alcoholism. When compared to sons and daughters of non-alcoholics, the sons and daughters of alcoholic parents are four times more likely to become alcoholics when they grow up. This is shocking. This is scaring. In other words... Parents who are alcoholics or children of alcoholic parents are four times at risk of becoming alcoholics. This is true even when these children of alcoholics are adopted at birth and raised without knowledge of their real parents' alcoholism. Can you imagine what they did is they took some children at birth from alcoholic parents and took them to foster families or orphanages where they grew up away from the knowledge and the influence of their alcoholic parents. Out of a hundred children who may have been rescued at birth, infancy, they don't know what alcohol looks like, they, they have never seen, they can't understand out of a hundred children raised in a neutral environment, if you would, in the foster family, 40 of them became alcoholics when they grew up. This is not influence. It begs the question, is alcoholism, is there a gene responsible for alcoholism? And the researchers would try and trace that gene and try to deal with it so that the spirit of alcoholism can be dealt with. Or the, 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 the influence can be broken. They go on to say about influence and the like. But can you see a spirit at work? It's a spirit passed on to the children. And the children, the children's children. is a bondage. Four times at risk. The other I can mention about is witchcraft. 
This seems to be a pattern in certain families. Families, it runs in certain families. There are practices like witchcraft, sorcery, divination that are passed on to the next generation. These are spirits. Witchcraft is not an art. Sometimes we use some of these negative words positively. What's the magic? How did you make it? Now you're going in a dangerous direction. What's the magic? This is, these are strongholds. This knows no civilization. Some of our cultures are more prone to this. If you came from a background where you practiced, you know, some are night runners. Eh? They don't do workouts at night. <laughs> If you have that spirit, even if you went to Europe, at night, you'll be running. And the mzungu will think that you're doing workouts. <laughs> it's a spirit. Can I be vulnerable here? God had blessed my late dad in amazing ways. Beautiful farm, great animals. And a number of things. But then we would wake up in the morning and see certain strange things. We knew in our village there were guys who had green eyes. Have you seen people with green eyes? People practice this. <laughs> Not this art. <laughs> it's witchcraft. You find your best cow. The, you know the switch of the cow? The tail end of the tail. <laughs> Cut off. And that animal, the milk output, suddenly nose dives. It was real. You wake up in the morning at the door, you see strange things. Who was here? A night runner or a witch? Based on jealous. And that's where it thrives. Very common in the village. You people are from heaven. Okay, let me stay on earth a bit longer before we are raptured, Okay. <laughs> And so out of fear of wanting to protect his family, he went to bring witch doctors to try and protect us. And in the village, that is seen as a good thing. I mean, you're, you're being proactive. <laughs> you're being proactive at best. Protect your family. So in these two ways, then the devil has a foothold in the family and in the community. Both those who actively participate in being night runners, witches, and witch doctors, and those out of fear or being harmed or being hurt, they go to seek protection. Both of them open doors for demonic oppression. That is how the devil controls families and cultures and communities. In demonology, study of, de uh, study of demons in the seminaries, they say a demon does not come except by invitation. They don't enter a person except there's an open door. The devil doesn't enter in a culture unless there are cultural practices that invoke evil spirits that make a way for them to come and enter the community. Those of you from outside Africa, you may not understand these things, but I know you have psychics. You know who is a psychic? It's a mchawi in the Western world. You have the occult. There is white magic. It's not about civilization. The devil is no respecter of civilization. He controls cultures differently. It opens the door for demonic oppression. He doesn't come without a cause. A door that is open for him to come and oppress. And our cultures are known for that. For some culture is kamote. You want that, Jama? Go and get something. You go and you get some, some charm to try and entice that man you've been wanting. For some people, they are so afraid of, of witches, so you have to dress your baby in red. Okay? They believe that if you wear a red attire, that guy with green eyes will not harm your baby. Others go for pig's oil. 
Mafuta ya nguruwe, okay? I caught you now there. You apply on the baby so that if you, in case, peradventure, you meet someone who has evil eyes, green eyes. They cannot hurt your baby. Some have given paraphernalias. Things to wear, things to put at home to try and protect your family. Can I say this? You're opening up yourself to demonic oppression. You're opening up yourself to, you are giving the devil a foothold. A reason to come and occupy and oppress. Thank God my dad got born again and I'll share a story next Sunday as we talk about transgenerational blessings. I'll make some reference to him. Bless his soul. These things open doors for oppression in our lives. Some of them may be even more dangerous. Covenants made. Did you know the art of divination is passed on? Once Someone enters into it. It's passed on to the children. Someone enters into a covenant that the entire family will be under this art, if you will. Under that spell. And so once you get born again, yes, you're set free. Hallelujah. He that the son sets free is free. Indeed. But you got to contend for your families, for those around you. And the others, even out of ignorance, who have opened the door for oppression. The devil will attack you whether you're born again or not. That's why you need to submit to God and then resist him. He will flee from you. It's an electioneering season. But we thank God for godly politicians. There are a few we have in this country. Men and women who... Genuinely depend on God as they solicit for votes around the country and across the country. That God will give them favor and that they will make the difference that is much needed in the country. But there are others, you know, the media, this is public information. Research has been conducted. Many of them end up in which, I mean, in which doctor's hearts. A London person with a university degree going to a shanty somewhere grass-touched house that has been that has seen better days leaking and everything to meet a witch doctor to get a secret of success looking for the magic try and control, control and manipulate people so they can vote for the person so that he can get influence or she can get influence these things are happening my brothers and sisters no if you're in your right sense, surely, if that witch doctor had the secret of prosperity or making it in life, and it's clearly not working for him. <laughs> it's not working for him. This is deception of highest order. That's why we need to pray for this country. Right from the words the county level, that God will give us men and women that fear God. When the righteous are in authority, there's peace and prosperity. Let's pray and reject any person who goes to seek and consult. You know, consulting, we have consultants, but some people go to consult in other quarters that they will be defeated in Jesus' name. Can you imagine having leaders who consulting from underworld is opening the country to dangerous oppression. We must pray. This is about warfare. No wonder Paul tells in the book of Ephesians that though we live in this world, we do not wage war as the world does. Our weapons are not carnal. It's not flesh and blood. We are not wrestling with man, but principalities, but powers, rulers of darkness that seek to control cultures, that seek to control economies, that seek, seek to control generations and countries. That is what we are wrestling against. The other challenge or way in which bondages are perpetuated in families and in communities through 
child naming ceremony. I came to realize that in some communities, it's a big thing. Before a child is given a name, certain rituals are done. The intestines of an animal are wrapped around the child. And some enchantments are said about this child. What are you doing to this child? You are opening them up to oppression. It's a covenant being made. It's bondage. Now, I know there are cultures that give a name. And I don't stop you from doing a name, a child naming ceremony. That's okay. You can redeem it. You can call brethren, hallelujah, have a party and thank God and celebrate the gift of life and thank God for this child and give them a prophetic name, a name that speaks about their mission, their character, and their calling and destiny. So you can turn it around to be a blessing. But where certain rituals are done is an open door for demonic control and oppression. The other ones are barrier ceremonies. There are certain communities that believe unless you do certain rituals, there are repercussions. So, in the so-called befitting send-off, there are certain things that are done. To the script, sacrifices, blood being smeared, and all those things being done so that we can ward off evil spirits so that the ancestral spirits can smile at us. Now, who are these ancestral spirits? The Bible says when you die, you go. Okay? You go. So who is hanging around here? Who is giving you nightmares? And some people, they actually go through nightmares. They can't sleep. Iti alikona alikuja uyu almeenda. Alikuja sangapi. That's, that's a demon. Those are impersonating spirits. And when you do that, you are binding yourselves to them. That's how the devil controls your family. That's how the devil controls cultures. By allegiances, sacrifices, covenants. I challenge you, listening within the hearing of my voice, if that is happening in your family, it must stop in Jesus' name. There are certain cultural things we must break in Jesus' name. Those patterns must come to an end in Jesus' name. I was shocked in some certain community. I will not give names. When someone dies, they believe that an elder person must be buried. You can't bury a king lying flat. He must sit up. They actually speak to the corpse and the corpse sits up. The coffin is designed in such a way that that can happen. You hear a commotion and someone sits up. Ati jipange tukuzike. Nana jipanga. I'm making light of this, but it's a reality. It's happening in our cultures. If you subject yourself to this futility, these bondages, you will become under a snare. Why I'm sharing all these things is to help you to be able to break from cultural bondages, from baggages that hold you so that you can be free to serve God and be a man and a woman of influence to the glory and honor of God. What must we do? My time is gone. First and foremost, like Jabez, take responsibility. Stop blaming your father. Stop blaming your mother. Stop blaming your grandparents. In their ignorance, they did certain things. But now that you have known the Lord, hallelujah, now that you're born again, you must take responsibility. The back now stops with you, not with them. The back stops with you. Take responsibilities. Don't become a victim of circumstances. Don't blame don't play the blame game. Take responsibility. Jabez, when he became of age, he cried out to the Lord. He took responsibility for his situation and his circumstance. Secondly, identify the specific negative pattern in your family. What are certain negative patterns? There are positive patterns that should be celebrated. Amen? 
But there are certain negative patterns you may have been predisposed to because of certain things done before you. If you notice a pattern, this is not just a one-off occurrence. A pattern means repeated occurrences. It happened to your uncle, it happened to your auntie, it happened to your brother, it happened to your sister. Those are what we call patterns. Is there a pattern of alcoholism? Is there a spirit of divination that seems to be running in the family? Even poverty, extreme poverty, is a spirit. It's an oppression. Identify that pattern in your family, that negative pattern. Thirdly, break that negative pattern in Jesus' name through repentance and through prayer. Repentance is a beginning point of realizing that, Lord, I take responsibility. And I stand in the place of my father. I stand in the place of my mother. I stand in the place of my grandparents. And I repent for this thing done. If you would, historical injustices. Certain things that are done that may be binding the family. You are not able to progress. Or misfortunes. Repent. For your sins, repent for the sins of your parents and, and those involved in this. Speak to this stronghold. Speak the word of God. The word of God and the name of Jesus is powerful and authoritative. Authoritative. The chains are broken in Jesus' name. Strongholds come tumbling down in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. It's a reality we are contending with. We must deal with these strongholds. Break this pattern, speak to this change, let them be broken in the name of Jesus. Jesus said, in my name you drive out demons. In the name of Jesus, cast out demons, heal the sick, cleanse the lepers. In the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess. Exercise your God-given authority. God has given you authority as a child of God. In Christ, you are able, hallelujah, to stand against anything that will be negative, that will be detrimental to your family, and contend for your family, and fight for your family in Jesus' name. Speak the word of God. Plead the blood of Jesus. Sacrifices may have been offered, but it's a greater sacrifice, hallelujah. Jesus Christ, through whose blood every sin is cleansed and purified in Jesus' name. The blood of Jesus. Speak it in the mighty name of Jesus. Next Sunday, I'll pick it from there and speak about how we will speak transgenerational blessings. For now, I think I want to give you a minute to reflect on your own family, especially extended family. Are there patterns you've seen that are of concern? Could be alcoholism, it could be addiction, it could be div divination, it could be certain misfortunes that seem to be tr following the family, tragedies following the family. Those may be signs that there is a stronghold that needs to be dealt with. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I want you to stand on your feet and just engage uh, with the Lord in prayer right now. In Jesus' name, as you take responsibility, as you stand in the gap to address these strongholds in the name of Jesus Christ. There is power in the name of Jesus to break every chain today, to free us in the name of Jesus to be all that God has called us to be. In Jesus' name, the Bible tells us there is no weapon that is formed against us shall succeed in Jesus' name. Let's call upon the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the blood of Jesus to break every chain, to break every negative pattern in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus, there is power in the name of Jesus to break every chain, break every chain, break every chain, to break every chain, break every chain. Break every chain. There is power. There is power in the 
name of Jesus. There is power. the army of God in this place rise up now in the name of Jesus rise up in Jesus name contend the warfare in the name of Jesus against every stronghold against every chain against every negative pattern in the name of Jesus 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 we break every chain we break every stronghold right now in the name of Jesus we rise up Lord we take responsibility in Jesus name in Jesus name in Jesus' name, we rise up right now, right now, right now, right now. In the name of Jesus, we break every spirit of witchcraft. We break every spirit of sorcery. We break every spirit of misfortune. In the name of Jesus Christ, in Jesus' name, we break every curse. We break every chain of poverty. In the name of Jesus, we break every chain of alcoholism. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. We break every stronghold right now. Everything that has hindered us. Everything that has dogged our families, Lord. Our family members, Lord. Right now we declare those chains broken in the name of Jesus. We break every yoke in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Come on, go ahead, go ahead, contend, contend. Battle, battle, battle in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Go ahead, address, address, address those specific patterns in Jesus name in Jesus name there is freedom in the house today let every chain be broken let every chain be broken let every chain be broken in the mighty name of Jesus every covenant made the powers of darkness we break it today through the blood of Jesus through the blood of Jesus we repent of every sin of our fathers and our forefathers some of them in ignorance dedicated us to the powers that be today we own up today we stand in the gap in Jesus name and we declare those covenants null and void through the blood of Jesus through the blood of Jesus we declare they are broken we declare those edicts broken we declare them broken in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus we declare those chains broken in the name of Jesus 
Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I rebuke every principality. I rebuke every power of evil. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. And the spirit that has gotten grip of you, hold of you today, I declare it broken. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke witchcraft. In Jesus' name, I rebuke divination. I rebuke sorcery. I rebuke a spirit of immorality. In Jesus' name. I rebuke every spirit of misfortune in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Today a new pattern is emerging. Today a new pattern is emerging. The blessings of God. The blessings of God. The favor of God. The grace of God. The hand of God. Influence, hallelujah. Enlarging of our tents, Lord. As for us in our household, as for me and my household, we declare with Joshua, as for me and my family, we will serve the Lord. My children will serve the Lord. My grandchildren will serve the Lord. My great grandchildren will serve the Lord. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. To break every chain, 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 break every chain. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. someone here you're going through some demonic oppression you don't sleep you're having nightmares a door was open to demonic oppression in your life today God wants to set you free wherever you are raise up here and don't be afraid don't be afraid the devil uses shame and fear to oppress you to hold you captive just raise your hand wherever you are you're oppressed you're going through some oppression you don't even understand God wants to set you free in Jesus' name. Thank you for the hands that are going up right now in the name of Jesus. I take authority against every demonic oppression. I rebuke every devil. I rebuke every principality and power of darkness. I rebuke you. Come out of their bodies. Come out of their bodies in Jesus' name. I command you principalities of darkness. Every spirit of the devil, I cast you out in Jesus' name. Let the chains be broken today. In Jesus' name, let the chains be broken today. I declare freedom. I declare healing today. In the mighty name of Jesus. Be free. Be free. Be free. Be free. Be free. In the name of Jesus Christ. Be free. Every false spirit, I cast you out of this place in Jesus' name. Every spirit of witchcraft, every spirit of darkness I rebuke you out of this place in Jesus name lose God's people today thank you Jesus for freedom thank you Lord for liberty Lord thank you for your blessings Lord we praise you we praise you we praise you thank you Jesus we honor you we worship you and we praise you in Jesus name in Jesus' name, Amen. it is done. In Jesus' name, some things have been lifted from your body. In Jesus' name, some baggages and bondages, some ways have been broken. In Jesus' name, we thank you, mighty God. We honor you. We praise you. Hallelujah. Congregation, as you leave the house of the Lord, before I say that, I, there's someone who needs to be born again. Yeah. You, you see... The Bible says, submit to God. 
unless and until you submit to God, you're bound. You cannot resist the devil. Submit therefore to God, resist the devil, and will flee from you. He will flee from you. Fleeing means running away as though in terror. He can be terrified. Don't be terrified of devils and demons. You can terrify them in Jesus' name. But you got to submit first to God. The first submission you make is to say, Lord, I am a sinner. Forgive me. Wash me. Come into my life. Make me your child. Be my Lord and Savior. Anyone who sing that prayer for the first time, or you backslid and you're coming back to the Lord, raise your hand. Allow me to pray with you in the closing moments of this service. Anyone like that sing, I want to be born again. Maybe I backslid and because of that, I've been in bondage. Thank you. I see that hand. Anyone saying, I want to be born again. I want to be set free. I want to be a child of God and walk in the liberty. I see another hand there. Thank you. Thank you. Another person. Can I ask you? Just come over here. Don't be afraid. It's a very long aisle to walk, but come over here. In Jesus' name, thank you. Another person, come here. Be born again. In Jesus' name, let the chain of sin be broken. In Jesus' name, even if you didn't raise your hand, you want to be born again. You want to submit to God. God wants to set you free. In Jesus' name, we want to pray together today. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Blessed be the name of Jesus. Chains are breaking. Chains of sin are breaking. There's a new life, a new birth happening here today in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come if you're coming to be born again. Hallelujah. I hear the chains falling. If you're still coming.